You're listening to Stand Out Get Noticed, episode 177. Hi there, Rockstar, and welcome to Stand Out Get Noticed. I'm Christina Cantors, speaker, coach, and founder of The C Method, where I help high performing professionals and business leaders to have more confidence, more influence, and impact in the workplace through building powerful communication skills. Learn more at thecmethod.com. Each week on the podcast, we address a different topic to help you build a success mindset, present yourself with confidence, build strong relationships, and be an all round better human. I would love to invite you to join our community over on Facebook. Search for the group The C Method Rockstars or go to thecmethod.com slash community. We cannot wait to meet you. All links mentioned in this episode, including the show notes, are in the podcast description in your app. Now, do you identify as shy? Or maybe you get nervous in social situations. Or do you have a debilitating fear of being rejected or people not liking you? My guest this week has experienced all of these things to the point where he was feeling incredibly lonely and depressed. Mike Makapinlak is originally from the Philippines. He grew up in Saudi Arabia and moved to Canada. Really interesting story. And as a shy, socially awkward guy in a new country, he knew he had to make a change if he wanted to live a happy, fulfilled life. He now runs a successful business, Social Confidence Mastery, where he helps shy tech guys to develop social confidence so they can succeed in their personal, romantic and professional lives. He also runs an awesome podcast on which I have also been lucky enough to be a guest. I will link that up in the show notes as well. So that's at socialconfidencemastery.com. So I brought Mike on because... I really love his approach to helping people build confidence. And uh, we had a conversation where he shared his story and he also shares what you can do to develop your confidence in social situations. So whether it's at a networking event, at social events, or asking someone out on a date, we talk about how to overcome your fear of rejection, as well as how to care less about what others think of you. I really enjoyed this conversation with Mike. That's Mike spelled M-Y-K-A, by the way, M-Y-K-A. Um, and I'm sure you'll get a lot out of it too. All right, let's get to it. Let's meet the master of social confidence, Mike Makapinlak. Um, I was born in a small farm in the Philippines and uh, I was raised in Saudi Arabia. So if you if you know anything about both countries, you know, they're both very conservative you know Saudi Arabia for anyone who's been there it's a it's a very it's a very interesting place because you know like they have like certain customs and traditions that didn't really apply when I moved to North America for example in Saudi um, it's very impolite to have uh, prolonged eye contact when you're talking to people it's considered rude right so when I came to Canada I had all these preconceived uh, notions of what I thought would be acceptable and not acceptable and because you know, like when you move to a different country, you know, like the, you, you don't really get educated on how to assimilate, right? Like they teach, you know, I learned, I learned about the Canadian anthem and, and uh, you know, like the, the language and all that stuff, but no one really taught me all the social norms. So like the first few years being in a new country was a huge struggle for me, you know, for a number of reasons. Number one, when I was 16, Christina, you wouldn't believe this, but I used to weigh 200 pounds, right? And at 5'5", five, five, I was a big kid. I had a 36 inch waist. Um, I had really bad social anxiety. In fact, I used to eat my lunch in a bathroom stall back in high school because I was too terrified to mingle with the other kids. And uh, back then I didn't speak. Oh, like in the movies. <laughs> there you go. Right. Yeah. And back then I didn't speak English too. So it was, it was, it was quite overwhelming, you know, like it was a lot to learn and absorb, um, for, uh, uh, you know, for my first year being in a new country. So, um, I mean, like, thank God, you know, I, I mean, even, even at a young age, I, uh, I'm able to process large uh, information at any given moment. So, you know, I took a step back and I started paying attention to those who are succeeding socially. And, and to me, like, that's kind of what sparked my interest to learn more about social dynamics, because, you know, like, there clearly there are people out there who are confident, social and charismatic, and I wasn't and I wanted to know what they were doing so I can emulate what they were what they were do, doing, doing too hoping that I can get a similar outcome. So that's kind of my background. And Mike, can you take me back to the moment when you realized 
that you had to make this change? Like what, what was going on at that point in time? Oh my God, Christina, uh, huge pain, loneliness. I was, I was just mad at myself. I was frustrated. I was staying at home Friday, Saturday, not because I didn't want to go out, you know, every, every bone in my body wanted to leave the house and socialize, but it felt like there was a glass wall that separated me from the people that I wanted to meet simply because I didn't know what to do. You know, it was one, you know, imagine if I bought you a car, right? Imagine if I bought you a, a car uh, with a manual transmission and, and all your life you've only known to drive automatic. You would sit in that car and, and you have, you know, every desire to like drive this car, but because no one taught you how to operate that car, you, you won't be able to do it. And, I, and that's how I felt, you know, like I, I, had, I had this desire to connect with people, but because I was, I was so unaware of what to do, um, I just didn't know how. And, and that made me frustrated. I had all this, you know, like energy and I, and I didn't know how to channel it. So that's kind of, yeah, it, it, it came from a, a really painful experience of just not wanting to be lonely anymore. You know, like I just, I, I felt like I missed out on so much, so many opportunities to connect with people. And, and I knew that I, I, I couldn't keep going the direction that I was going. I, mm. I had to do something and, and make a change. And that's when my, that's, that's how my journey really started. And tell me, Mike, when you did go out, when you were around people, this is before you build up your social confidence, what were some of the the stories or what were the voices in your head telling you when you were in those situations? Oh, a lot of it was about my appearance. I, I, I genuinely okay. thought people wouldn't accept me because I looked different. You know, like um, I was 5'5", five five, I had dark skin, I had, you know, almond eyes, like I looked different than most people. Like, I just felt like, I just felt like I wasn't enough. I, I, I felt like, uh, you know, people wouldn't accept me because <clears throat> I look different, right? So that's a big part of my story. The other one was what I had to say isn't important, you know, so I, so I had a lot of uh, people pleasing tendencies when I was younger. Uh, even my tonality, right? Like, is everything okay? Like, I would always be like very catering to people, wanting to be accepted, wanting to mm. be, wanting to uh, just be part of a group, you know. And 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 unfortunately, I got involved with a lot of a lot of really bad groups when I was younger, you know. Like, um, I got involved with a bad crowd just because I wanted to be accepted. And even though they did things that I didn't really wanted to do, I I did it anyway, just so I I would fit in. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, absolutely. And then when you started this journey of, um, you know, educating yourself and opening up your eyes to what could be, what was what were some of the first few things that you did? Like, who did you look to? And what did you learn? It's funny. So a lot of my education back then just came from books, you know, like, uh, I basically bought like every book that I can get around confidence, how to be charismatic, body language, first impression. But my first breakthrough actually happened when I had a bartending job. So, you know, I had my engineering job during the day. And then, you know, during the weekend, I would bartend at this nightclub, right? Just because it's fun, you know, like it's, it's, a, it's a nice escape from my boring day job. And then uh, I actually met two guys who were running a company teaching social dynamics. And um, when I found out that that's what they did, and, and back then it was like a huge topic of interest, I did everything I could to um, partake in what they were doing. So at first they took me on as an intern. Um, you know, like I did everything I could to really earn a spot to become one of their coaches. So I got trained to be uh, a coach at a, at a really young age. And, um, we traveled all over Canada teaching these, uh, these, uh, boot camps, you know, like helping guys improve their social skills. And that was my first big breakthrough. And that experience opened up many doors for me, you know, and since then I've been able to connect with some of the top influencers in this space um just like you know like networking right like once it's one of those things where once you meet someone and they like you they start introducing you to other people who can help you out and then they like you too and and they start introducing you to other people and that's kind of that's kind of what happened i had a lot of formal and informal uh mentors uh in my life who kind of paved the way and show me what was possible it was one of those things right like you can't unsee something that you've seen you know so like seeing these guys in action the way they interact uh, with people the way they they conducted themselves in many different social settings it gave me like not just a tangible role model but it made the whole process more believable you know because some of these guys who i met 
they were very average looking. It, it defied my belief that, you know, you have to be like six foot one and good looking and be ripped or whatever. Some of these guys, like they look very average and they, they are very socially successful. And it's because of the way they make other people feel and the way they feel about themselves. You know, like when they look at themselves in the mirror, you know, like they, they see themselves like bigger than life. And I'm like, oh my God, like, like I want to, I want to, I want to think like that. I want to behave like that. So I had, I was blessed, Christina, you know, I had, I had a lot of formal and infor, uh, informal mentors throughout my journey. Yeah. And look, I've experienced that as well. Like surrounding yourself with people who are at the level that you want to be, sure. like surrounding yourself with that, with that level, with people who are at that level of success oh. is absolutely mm-hmm. critical to your own development. So when you saw these guys who were behaving this way, thinking this way, it's not, I mean, it doesn't usually happen overnight where we can just flick a switch and all of a sudden be confident. Mm-hmm. It takes time. Mm-hmm. What were some of the things what were some of the things that you started to do to then become more like that in, in your own mind? It's funny. So my journey started off um, learning about external tactics, right? Like what to say, what to do, how to behave, how to stand, how to dress, all these things. And while I did get some results, um, the real growth happened when I took a break from all the external stuff and I started down a more spiritual path, you know, like really, um, really like getting clear about who I am as a person, you know, like asking the tough questions, you know, like outside of all these things, who am I? What do I want? What do I believe in? Mm-hmm. What are my core values? How do I see myself? What are stories that are, uh, what are, what are the stories that I'm telling myself? You know, like, like, how do I want to be remembered? Like thinking bigger, thinking bigger than, than what's happening around me. To me, Christina, like when, when I started down that path of, of just like getting more in alignment from within first, like re- really getting rooted internally, that's when things really changed for me because, you know, like, uh, you know, back then I was like very animated, right? I was like big, you know, loud, you know, <laughs> like borderline obnoxious. And, and I didn't know how to calibrate myself in every situation. And it, it wasn't until I started uh, a mindfulness practice, meditation, gratitude, journaling, taking a, a technology break, you know, like once or twice a week, spending time in nature, um, you know, being around spiritual people, doing yoga. To me, Christina, that's what made all the difference. Yeah, I cannot agree more because oftentimes all of these insecurities that we have, they're stemming from, you know, something within us. It's all, it's all internal. Absolutely. And this is something that I, you know, there are a lot of coaches out there in the sort of public speaking space that focus on the externals as well. Like, here's what you say, Mm -hmm. here's how you move your hands, here's how you do this. And really it's got to come from from the mind it's going to come from inside because when you're in yeah. a good place then all those other things start to flow more naturally so sure. i wholeheartedly agree and you can only you can only fake your external behavior for so long right like you know at some point your non-verbal behavior will give you away so i think it's so i mean yes it's very important to understand how to stand how to move your hand you know where to look all these kinds of things but i think the work will become much easier if you start from within first, you know, like seeing yourself as a confident and charismatic and, and uh, someone worthwhile getting to know, then the body language becomes a lot easier. Mm, absolutely. And I think, yeah, learning to love yourself is absolutely key to that totally. as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So Mike, let's talk about, I, I really appreciate you sharing your story and I think it's really important for people to hear that so that they know that, you know, then if they're feeling in a, a similar way, you know, they're not the only ones. They know that they're not oh, the only my ones God. going yes. through it. For sure. And, and you know what, Christina, like I share that story openly now because, uh, you know, like I'm sure you've heard of the saying before, right? Like you can't take someone to a place you've never been to, you know? And, and to me, like the work that I've done the last five years, you know, like, um, making peace with the parts of myself that I used to not like, right? Like really, you know, diving deep and, you know, forgiving every part of myself that, that, you know, I used to resent for, you know, like, and to me, that's why I have so much compassion when I, when I work with my students. Like I have, I have uh, so many guys who are like depressed. Like there, there's one guy in particular who enrolled earlier this year. He was suicidal. He was going to take his life because he was so lonely and, and I had nothing but compassion for him. Cause I know, I know what it's like to be, to be that depressed and lonely that you just want to give up, you know? So I think, um, 
yeah, like vulnerability can really bond people deeper because it, it makes you more relatable, you know? When you do have a client like that who is at the very bottom, rock bottom, what's what's one of the first things that you work with them on? Is it that, the, um, you know, asking those big questions? The first thing that I get them to work on is, uh, so people are depressed, uh, from, my, from my understanding and from my experience, you know, mind you, I'm not, I'm not a medical professional, right? So everything that I'm sharing right now around this topic is anecdotal. I just want to make, I just want to make that clear, okay? Absolutely. So, so, uh, so people who are depressed, typically it's because they tend, they've trained their minds to focus more on what's going wrong in their lives than what's going right. So the first thing that I get them to do with those people is to just like have a daily habit of meditation. Like take a moment, you know, uh, even like like taking a moment in the morning and doing like five deep breaths, you know, slowing down your breathing, you know, um, slowing down your thoughts. And then after that, like writing down three things that are going well in your life. And 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 believe it or not, Christina, mm-hmm. after a week of doing that, I, I mean, those guys are like, wow, I feel so much better. It's because they're not, they're, they're just like, they're letting their minds take over um, what's happening in them, right? But now that they have this conscious practice to do that, like, hey, maybe I should take the time to recognize the things that are going well in my life, you know? And, and they're like, after a week of doing that, and I keep telling them, you, you can't repeat the same thing you mentioned. Like, it has to be different. And after a week of doing that, that that's 21 things that you're thankful for. Like, that, you, that changes mm-hmm. people's pers- perspectives. Yeah, breaking that pattern is so powerful. For sure. Absolutely. Shifting that focus. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike, let's dive deeper into more of the sort of techniques or how-tos so people can walk away with some for, things for sure. to, you know, to to implement. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask you about particularly was uh, something that I found to be most effective for building my own confidence is to stop caring about what others think of me. And it's really easy to say this, I'll just stop caring about what the others think of you, but it's not so easy to implement. Um, do you have some, you know, tips or, or uh, techniques that you can share to help people to overcome this or manage it, this fear of what others think? Of course. So that's actually a really good question. So the reason why most people care so much about what other people think is because they don't know what they want. That, that to, for me, and again, this is totally anecdotal. This is just from my experience and from the guys that I've worked with. Because most guys that I've worked with, they haven't stopped and asked themselves, what do I want and where do I want my life to go? It's easy for them to get influenced by other people. You know what I mean? Like it's so easy to look at what other people are doing because they've never taken the time to like define their own core values and, and create their own direction. So, so they're like, um, it's easy for them to like get taken off their path because they don't know what they're, they don't know. They don't know what, which path they're on. You know what I mean? Mm. So, so it starts with like getting clear about like, what do you believe in? What's important to you? Uh, what do you value? Where's your life going? What do you want? What kind of people do you want to meet? Like just getting clear, get clear on who you are and what you want and where you want to go. And, and, and just that step alone. Um, and, and mind you, like this doesn't have to be like an overnight thing, you know, like spend some time in nature, you know, like take a, take a full day off and just like go for a walk, have a journal with you, sit at a park and, and uh, in silence and just write down, what do I want? And whatever inspiration comes up to you, write it down and it becomes this like ongoing process. And then next thing you know, you have your your own like life compass that's directing you in the right direction. Mm, love it. So so then if you're speaking with someone and you're talking and you're confident in what you want and what you know to be true within you, mm-hmm. then then that's going to I'm just trying to paraphrase to see if I've understood this correctly. So if you know exactly what you want. And you're talking in a way where you speak with complete conviction. Yeah. It's going to then help to um, maybe not remove completely, but reduce then your fears is what they're thinking. But what if you are? What if you are fearful about? You might you might know what you want, mm-hmm. but what if you're still fearful about what other people think about that? You know, what if you're not? Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. So to me. Th- that's a that's an interesting question. So so for example, right? Um, when I used to be friends with the wrong people, I felt like I couldn't be myself because I feel like we don't see life the same way. So one of the best things that I've done for myself is to actually remove myself from that really 
harmful environment and, and, and look for new friends who see life the same way I do. Because when, when I'm around the right people who believe the same things that I do, then, then there's no convincing, right? You know what I mean? So, no. yeah. for example, um, and I hear this a lot, right? You know, let's say uh, one of my friends started a business and he grew up in a very, you know, like traditional conservative family who, you know, who they're, they're like, oh, you have to get a job and, you know, you have to go to school, get a degree, whatever, right? And he finds it hard to be around those kinds of people. And it's because like, look, you know, like your, your, your parents see life very differently than you do. So trying to convince them to see life the same way you do is going to be very difficult. You know, like you just have to recognize that for what it is and you have to find a different group. You know, like it's so hard mm. to go against the grain all the time, trying to convince people that like, look, this is what I'm doing. This is what I want. Right. Like, like, like trying to convince other people to change their minds, in my opinion, is one of the biggest waste of time. Just like find people who want the same things as you make life easy, you know, find a path of least resistance and just go for that. It doesn't have to be complicated because you can't control people. You can't. Absolutely. I remember sitting down I, I met up with a couple of girlfriends who are both business owners. And as soon as we sat down, one of them goes, okay, ladies, what were our wins this week? And I was like, I love this question. Right? And it was, it just reminded me, like, I've got groups of friends who would never ask that question. Sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're just different. Yeah. You know, that's not the mindset they're in of, hey, let's talk about our wins. Mm. You know what I mean? Of and course. just being around people like that is so energizing and uplifting. And you just feel like, oh my God, I can talk about my challenges and my wins openly. And I know that I'm not going to be judged because they understand me. For sure. Yeah. So so my advice around that is, is don't don't chase people, you know, like keep doing the thing that makes you happy. Because if, here's the thing, Christina, if you're living authentically, if you're living out your core values and you're fully demonstrating it, then other like-minded people will be able to recognize that, right? And they'll and, and they'll be able to find you quicker. But if you're this kind of person who's, you know, trying to blend in and be a chame chameleon with this person, you're like this, with that person, you're like that. Now people are confused. You know, it's like, are you a chicken? Are you a dog? Are you a goat? Which one are you, right? You know what I mean? So like, just, just be yourself, mm. live your core values, act accordingly. And trust me when I say this, the right people will show up in your life and those are the people who will stay guaranteed. Hey there, Rockstar. I want to take a quick break to share with you something really exciting that I've got coming up. Now, if you're looking to improve your confidence and skill with networking and also with speaking in front of a group in order to grow your business, put yourself out there, I am running a public speaking and networking course. Well, it's a, a two-day program um, on, over a Saturday and Sunday in November. It's the 10th and 11th of November, and I'm very excited to be teaming up with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve Carey, and we will be teaming up and sharing things with the group around how to present confidently, how to develop your own tailored presentation how to create a plan to expand your business and to um, get more clients and get more opportunities. Um, also learning how to deliver your own polished presentation and learning among supportive, encouraging colleagues. Um, Steve will also be covering how to overcome your anxiety and getting your head in the right place. So if you're looking to improve your skills in this area and put yourself out there, maybe you run your own business and you want to grow that and get more clients through networking and speaking, then this is for you. I will link up the um, that event in the show notes of this episode. So go have a look at that in the description of your podcast app. So 10th and 11th of November in Melbourne, I can't wait to see you there. Okay, back to the show with Mike McApinlack. Let's talk about rejection mm. because I know this is huge for everyone, mm -hmm. you know, me included. I, I still, you know, am working to overcome this fear mm. and it's scary for everyone. And I would love to hear how, like, what, what's your methodology for helping someone to, to overcome their fear of rejection? Yeah. How does someone start with that? So the example that I always give here is kind of silly. Um, one of my best friends, he's uh, lactose intolerant. And uh, sometimes I forget 
And when we're at Starbucks, I'll offer to like get him a latte, right? And he's like, bro, like I'm lactose intolerant. I can't have it, right? So in that situation, did he really reject me? Or is it just like a mismatch of, of uh, you know, like, the, like wants and offers? You know what I mean? And sometimes people forget that, right? You know, and, and this is when, you know, again, this comes back, this conversation comes back full circle because if you know the kind of people you want to meet, right, and you know what's important to you, you should be using that to evaluate every conversation that you have. Because here's the thing, right? You know, for example, from a, from a dating perspective, it doesn't matter how hot this, the guy or girl is, right? If you're talking to that person and both of you have nothing in common, I mean, like you, ha- I mean, you should be thankful if you get rejected because you're, A, you're sa- saving yourself a lot of time and energy um, getting to know someone bec- and, and immediately you know that you have, if you have nothing in common, you should be thankful you're getting rejected. That's one. Number two, the reason why most people fear rejection is because all they can think of is the worst case scenario. They, they, they don't think of the best case scenario. And here's the thing. When you approach someone and you start a conversation, both are possibilities. Things can go well and things can go badly. So one of the things that I do, you know, let's say, for example, um, if I'm out and I see someone that I want to, that I'm attracted to and I want to interact with, the first thing that I do is I close my eyes and I think of the pa- like like other experiences that I've succeeded. I mean, don't get me wrong, like I, I've been rejected many times, right? The only difference between me and other people who are afraid of rejection is that I'm very quick to forget about my mistakes. I don't, I don't, I don't replay them over and over again. I learn my lesson and I forget about them. I delete them in, in, in my brain, right? So call me like optimistically delusional, but it works well for me. I only, I only <laughs> remember good things that happened to me and that helps me um, become more positive and optimistic. Like, you, I'm sure you've met people before that are jaded, right? And th- that's not that's not a very attractive energy to be around. That just means that you focus more on all the negative things that have happened to you versus the positive things. So for me, if I see someone that I want to talk to, and I get that, you know, like that that you know, you know that that uh, quick uh, the the um, the heart racing, uh, yeah, the heart racing. I close my eyes. I take a deep breath. I think of like a previous experience where I've been successful interacting in a very similar situation. I go back to that, to that feeling in my head. I feel it in my body. Ah, it calms me down. And then I go. And you know what? The fact that you are calm and relaxed will play a part in you not getting rejected as well, because you'll come across as being confident and relaxed and not needy or, or weird. Yeah, or or I mean, I and I've also been in situations where I just said like, look, I'm pr- I'm really nervous coming up to you, but I just know I would I would regret it if I don't. And 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 nine times out of ten, they're like, wow, thank you for saying that. Yes, you can just ab- always just admit it. A bit of honesty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong being honest. Just be like, hey, I'm nervous, but I thought I'd talk to you anyway. Like, I mean, if someone did that to me, it'd be like, wow, thank you. I really appreciate. It. I would. I would. I would receive it so well. You know what I mean? Like, how can you, how can you turn away someone who's being completely honest? How could you, you know? Like, I, mm. I mean, I mean, I can't. So, You know, when I was single, um, I know this happens more in North America. I've, I found that guys are more, um, they're more sort of forward with, you know, say asking, you know, if they can buy you a drink or asking you out. But in Australia, guys are, pretty terrible at it like it doesn't happen very (laughs) often at all and I remember when I was single and if if a guy asked me to my face hey you know I think you're cute or hey can I buy you a drink or hey you know would you like to go out sometime I would say yes purely out of the fact that they had the balls to ask me face to face because it was so rare and like even if even if, you know, we weren't, you know, good for each other or whatever, it wasn't going to go anywhere. I was like, you know what, at least I'm, I'm going to give this guy like, you know, a couple of hours of my time purely because I'm so impressed that you actually had the balls to ask. So that was and you my, know what could happen, right? that was, no, you absolutely. And I was always very impressed because it just, it's just so rare. So mm. any Australian guys listening to this, you know, if you can <laughs> ask a girl out face to face, instead of just going to Tinder, cause it's the yeah. easy option. If you can just ask a girl yeah. out face to face, like, oh my God, you will stand out amongst the crowd for sure. Totally. Uh, are you for saying sure. I should book a flight now from Canada to Australia? <laughs> <'Cause>, uh... 
<laughs> yeah, come on down. We've got lots of gorgeous ladies here for you, Mike. Yeah. Let me ask you, like, 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 do Australian girls find like the Canadian accent exotic? Because like when you guys come down here, you guys sound really exotic to us. Mm, yeah, look, we love Canadians. Oh, we love Canadians. Perfect. There you go. Yeah, I'll be looking for the next cheap, uh, cheapest flight. Yeah, absolutely. Come on down. <laughs> um, so, Mike, it's been so great chatting with you. Um, I know that you 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 help a lot of guys um, with this. I know you've got you've got books, you've got your program. Can you share a little bit about about your program and and the sort of people who who come to you? Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much. So I'm I'm sure everyone listening to this has heard of the saying: "In life, it's not what you know; it's who you know." Right. Um, your network, your net worth is your network type of stuff. But then, you know, like you go to school, you learn things like math, physics, chemistry, and, and no one teaches you how to be social, confident, and charismatic, right? So a lot of guys um, who struggle socially, um, it's because it, it's, a, it's a knowledge gap. No one taught them these things, you know, the same way that no one taught me, right? So just so you know, you know, it's a learnable skill. And, uh, you know, like um, for me, um, I, I really specialize with with guys who are from the STEM community because I understand their struggle. I've been there before. I know what it's like. So that so my program is called the Social Confidence Blueprint. It's a twelve week course that helps guys go from shy to social. We go over uh, you know the five fundamentals. So you know your minds, you know changing your mindset, improving your self image, creating a great first impression so that you're get you're you're communicating your best self when people see you right away. Managing your anxiety, improving your conversation skills, and design a life you love so that's the five components that we go through the program and uh yeah 12 weeks long i mean as far as i can remember five of my students got married last year who took the program so that was really cool yeah Yeah. i went to my first indian wedding actually and that was really fun i don't know if you've been to an indian wedding it's so it's so fun it's so colorful so yeah so if you're interested in if you're interested to hear more uh, you know, check out my sites i've got books too you can go to amazon you can go to my website uh you can check out my books And, uh, you know, get a taste for like what it's like to work with me, you know, the kind of information that I teach, my philosophy and things. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Love it. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, Christina. Big thank you to Mike Macapinlack for being such a wonderful guest on the show this week. You can find out more about what he does at socialconfidencemastery.com or simply visit the show notes. There's a link there in your podcast uh, description in your app. Now, before I leave you, a quick reminder to join our Facebook group, The C Method Rockstars. Um, It's a great place to connect with other like-minded individuals, people who follow the podcast and also the work that I do. Um, I share, I pop in every now and again with a Facebook live video, did one this morning of uh, giving some networking tips. So if you do want to connect with the community, come on over and join us. I can't wait to meet you. And that brings this week's episode to an end. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Keep on being awesome and I'll talk to you next week. My name's Christina Cantors and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. Thank you for listening to Stand Out, Get Noticed. To learn more and inquire about the C-Method coaching, keynote and corporate training programs, visit thecmethod.com.